During the mid-1930s, the Library of Congress made available talking books for, for persons with visual disabilities that prevented them from reading standard printed material. For many decades, the books were on records. They started out on 33 and a third RPM 12 inch records, and they eventually wound up on 10 inch 16 RPM records. And before they phased records out, they were on 8 RPM records at either 10 inch rigid disc or 9 inch flexible disc. The books were loaned free to patrons who were in the talking book program along with the playback equipment. Now this is not an early talking book record player. This is actually one from the late 70s. This is from my era. These were actually very popular during the 80s and 90s during my growing up years. This plays 8, 16, and 33 RPM records. Now the disadvantages to books on record is they take up a lot of room, they won't fit in a standard mailbox, and they are very easily damaged, and the machines re require a good bit of maintenance to keep them in proper order. In fact, here's what the records came in during my era. Obviously this won't fit in a mailbox, and here's an example of one of the talking book records from the 70s. Here's Side 1, Toward Understanding the Bible, by Georgia Hartness. This is a reissue of Talking Book 2855. This book contains two recordings. And books and magazines also came on flexible records in these paper envelopes. As you can see, these are flexible. We have a braille label on one side and a print label on the other side. Most of these discs are recorded at 8 RPM, but this one's actually recorded at 16 RPM. Record Talking Magazine for August 1979, recorded on four sides. This publication is designed to bring joy and motivation through entertainment and education, comfort through the experience of others, and hope for today and the tomorrows through promises which cannot fail. Now, most of these records are ones that I've picked up here, there, and yonder, and ones that people have given me and most of them are actually before my time. Well, as time marched on and technology changed, the Library of Congress realized that they needed to change too. So they started moving away from books on record. Actually, I think the last recorded magazines on record were in the year 2000. But during the 1970s, they started shifting away from records and moving towards a smaller format known as the cassette tape. Now the advantages here is that the tapes are small enough that they'll fit in a standard mailbox and you can record up to six hours of material on the on one cassette because these are recorded at 15 16 inches per second which is half the normal tape speed and they record up to four tracks of information on a single cassette, so the cassettes take up a lot less room than the records did. However, the disadvantages are that, like records, cassettes wear out with repeated usage, and the machines, since they have a good bit of moving parts, they wear out and have to be serviced and eventually replaced. But we'll give this a shot. Let you hear what it sounds like. Towers of Power, Super Sonata Sonics. Page 15, side 1, tone 4. We have our volume control here and our controls for speed and side select. 
We also have a pitch control for slowing down or speeding up the recording. Page 21. And another disadvantage of cassettes is it often takes several cassettes to make up one book and you have to constantly rewind or fast forward or flip the tape over etc and they give you instructions at the end of each side as to what to do next end of side one to continue turn the cassette over side two sound and vision february march 2012 End of side two. To continue, change side selector switch and turn the cassette over. So there you get the idea about what we have to do here to play a cassette in its entirety. Side three. Sound and vision. February, March 2012. This side contains... These cassette players were in use for years. In fact, I think the last ones were made in 2007. And from about 2007 until 2013 or so, they continued to distribute cassette players out of old stock. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention about these is, unlike the record player that's AC operated only, these contain a built-in rechargeable battery pack that's good for about six hours of play time. So you can take these pretty much wherever you want to. Well, fast forward again and the Library of Congress has adapted to modern technology once again. Now the cassette format is basically phased out in favor of new digital technology. In today's world, Talking books are recorded on special digital cartridges like this. There are no moving parts involved, and in most cases, the whole book can be recorded on a single cartridge. So all you have to do to listen to a book is insert the cartridge into the machine, turn it on. Player on. Chasing the sun. Volume up, volume up, volume up. Land of the Lone Star, book one, by Tracy Peterson. DB74394 Brilliance Audio Incorporated, an Amazon.com company, originally produced this unabridged recording for the commercial market. It and the nice thing, one of the nice things about this particular player is you can obviously fast forward or rewind to certain points on the book. It has a sleep timer that will shut the machine off after so many minutes. And you can actually remove a book from the machine and insert another cartridge. And when you reinsert the first cartridge back in the machine, it'll remember where you left off. You don't have to rewind or fast forward anything. And there are no moving parts in the machine, so it should be more reliable. In fact, I've had this machine since 2010, and it's been trouble-free. And... I've gone through several of these cassette players over the past several years. But when you have a problem with a machine, all you have to do is send it back and they'll replace it. Like the cassette player, this unit has a built-in battery pack, but you can get about 30 hours out of this battery pack as opposed to maybe 6 hours out of this one. So there you go, a brief little demonstration of various pieces of talking book technology over the years. If you want more information about the talking book program, you can either contact me or you can go to their website, which is www.loc.gov slash NLS. I believe that's correct. So, okay, there you go.